We are now live here on Facebook. We are live on Instagram. What's good, everybody? This is Dre all day. Y'all all know who I am. Welcome to the live stream. Y'all ain't even in here yet, but welcome anyway. Everybody who's watching this on replay, I'm going to put my pinned comment in place, and then we're going to get into the proceedings this evening as soon as Instagram alerts some of my followers that I have started a live broadcast. Let's see. Make sure I got that right. Mirrorofmotivation.com is the pinned comment here. So as y'all come in, tell me your names and locations. We're going to get right into the proceedings this evening. Today, we are talking about where to find opportunity. There's one specific place I'm going to tell you about finding opportunity here today that all of you can, all you can start utilizing this right now, today, like as of as soon as I start talking about it, you'll be able to start utilizing this. So we're going to give uh, Instagram and Facebook a minute to see if they can alert some people that have started a live video. Then whoever's in here, we're going in. Whoever's in here, we're going to go in in a moment. So as y'all come in, tell me a name and location, name and location, name and location. As we get started, let me see if I can get better sound. Plug this mic in here. As y'all come in, tell me your names and locations as y'all coming in on uh, Instagram. Coming in on Facebook, leave a comment, tell me your names and locations. We're going to get into it in a moment. This is the book that you see in the pinned comment, The Mirror of Motivation, The Self-Guide, Self-Discipline. You get this book completely for free. I will ship it to you worldwide. It doesn't matter where you live. We are, we are immune. This book is immune. Not me, but this book is immune to the coronavirus, so you can get it shipped even though a lot of things are shut down. Shipping this book is not shut down. So come in. Names and locations, names and locations. We're going to get into it in a minute. SoCal is in the house. Shout out to SoCal. Mark, Colorado Springs was good. As y'all come in, tell me your names and locations. We're going to get started in, we're going to get us no more than 60 seconds. Now I'm going to introduce myself. For those people who may not know me, you may have stumbled in here not knowing what you walked into. I'm going to introduce myself, introduce the topic. Then we're going to get into the topic. I'm going to take questions and then that's going to be it. All right, so I'm telling you what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to do it. Then I'm going to recap it. And then it's, then it's going to be it. I, I am Man Roy Del Rey. What's good, Del Rey? Northeast Philly is in the house. Shout out to my grandma. She lives in Northeast Philly. Derek, Georgia, and some other people I know in Northeast Philly whose names I won't mention here. But as y'all come in, names and locations. <laughs> my name is Dre all day. We're going to get started in about 15 seconds. I'm going to introduce myself. Then we're going to introduce the topic and get into this. Hope everybody's having a good Wednesday. Uh, sheltered in place, quarantine, whatever you're calling it. Not being able to leave your house. Shout out to the people who did, who are still working their normal work schedule. Shout out to people who are working extra right now because of what we got going on. But anyway, my name is Dre Baldwin. Kirill from Ontario, Canada. What up? Also known as Dre All Day. I'm the creator, proprietor, and owner of this company called Work On Your Game, which is all about taking the mindset necessary to succeed and excel in professional sports and teaching how that same mentality applies to the business world, how it applies to all of life. And if you happen to be an athlete, doesn't matter what sport how that mindset also applies in sports. And today what I want to talk is one specific place I'm going to tell you where to find opportunity in life. It doesn't matter who and where you are, what your situation is right now. That opportunity that you will always find in life is in the opposites. Melissa from Philly, shout out to Philly. So we got some Philly representation here today. The opportunity is in the opposites. That's the topic that I want to talk about here today. And some of you may have heard the saying, I don't even know who first said it, but it's been attributed to many people that if you want to, if you want to do something different or you want to have something different from what everybody else has, then all you got to do is look around, see what everybody else is doing, see where everybody else is going and go the opposite direction or do the opposite thing. I think some of you may have heard that before. Maybe you think it, maybe you already believe it. What I want to explain today, I'm going to tell you three specific things that will help you understand this concept, not only just logically, but also hopefully you understand it emotionally. Because when you understand something logically, you can recite it and you can write it down and somebody says it, you can nod your head. But if you don't understand it emotionally, you're not going to implement it. You're not going to enact it. You're not going to actually use it in your life. So you know it, but it's not actually doing anything for you. Well, maybe you're informed of it. You might believe it, but you don't know something until you have actually put it into action. So that's what I'm going to talk about here today. Three specific points I'm going to give you. Number one, if you want to stand out in life, anywhere that you go, anything that you do, 
All you have to do, instead of trying to be better than everybody else, all you got to do is be or do what everybody else is not being and do what everybody else is not doing. So if everybody is panicking and going crazy and losing their heads, what you need to do is be the calm and collected and relaxed individual. You're going to stand out just because of that. And because you're standing out, people will gravitate to you. People will pay attention to you. And then at that point, you can give them whatever you want to give them. You got some knowledge you want to share. You got something you want to sell. You got some directions you want to give. You want people to follow you on your path. Now they're paying attention to you. Now you have the opening to do that as soon as you get people's attention. So you understand the world that we're in now, cool, dark one was good. The world that we live in now, we're in an attention economy. And it's been like this for years. I said this when I was on uh, Grant Cardone's Young Hustler like five years ago, literally five years ago. I said, we're in the attention economy, which means you can't, get what you want to get in life just by having a whole bunch of money, you still got to get people's attention and not even having skill, not even working on your game. You got to be able to get people's attention first. If you don't have anyone's attention, then nobody's going to know that you're good. Nobody's going to know what you have to offer. No one's going to know anything about what you could do to help them until you get somebody's attention and you're competing for attention with Netflix, with everybody on Instagram, every Facebook post, anything that's happening offline, the news about the coronavirus, you're competing with anything that can take another person's attention because human beings as complex and as wise and as dominant as we are over the animal kingdom, we still have one major limitation is that we can only pay attention to one thing at a time. There's no such thing as multitasking. Anybody who told you they're multitasking, they're lying. All they're doing is task switching and they're not doing either one very well while they're doing it. Andy Young, what's going on? Thank you for the message. Today we're talking about, again, the opportunity being in the opposite. You want to stand out from everyone else. Just do or be. Represent what everybody else is not representing. And understand that you it may be, even though, let's say it like this, you may be the, want to be the best at what you do. You want to be the best in the world. You want to be better than everybody else out there. The challenge with that is only one person can be the best. And the challenge is it may take you a long time to get to being the best. And honestly, you may never get there. Now, there may be other people who have more talent than you. They got a, a more far enough head start that you can't catch up. It's going to take you all of your life to even try to approach where they're at. You may not have the raw resources necessary to be better than everybody else. And let's also realize that being the best is a matter of opinion. So you might think you're the best, but if the people who make the decision or your customers or your prospects don't think you're the best, then it doesn't matter that you think it. I mean, it does on some level when you're looking in the mirror, but overall, it doesn't matter. Not really. What really matters is if you're different, because when you're different, you can't be duplicated. And if someone wants what you have to offer, they can't get it anywhere else. Now, if I'm, I say I'm the best and I say I got the best book on motivation out there called The Mirror Motivation. But somebody else says, well, Jerry, I disagree. I think Tony Robbins book is better or I think Gary Vee's book is better or I think E.T.'s book or I think David Goggins book or I think Michael Jordan's book are all better than yours when it comes to motivation. Now, I could argue with them and, and shout them down and prove my point. But if they believe that they're, those other guys' books are better than mine and I believe mine is the best, what did I actually gain? Nothing. But if I say I got this book here, The Mirror Motivation, is the only book that is a self-guide to self-discipline written by a pro athlete who can tell you how to take the mindset of an athlete and apply it in your business and your sport and your life, not in a, a rah-rah hype-up type of way like some other people you may know, but in a way that is rational and logical that you will understand not only logically but also emotionally be able to apply it in your life to this whole thing called the work on your game philosophy. Now, nobody could say somebody else could do that better than me. Now, I made myself different. I made myself stand out in a way that there is no competition. So when you're different... Or the opposite. Different opposite could be the same thing. Could be a, some gradient of the opposite being different. You stand out and you eliminate all your competition by doing something that everybody else can't do. If you try to compete with people on who's better, again, you're subject to people's opinions and you just may never catch up no matter how good you think you are. So trying to beat everybody out of being the best is, is an uphill battle. So for example, when I say you want to stand out, do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. I know the Golden State Warriors, right? The basketball team, they have, you know, I guess you could say revolutionized the game of basketball with all the three-point shooting. And obviously they had the talent to do it. They had three of the best three-point shooters in the history of basketball all on the team at the same time. And the thing is this, before they started doing that, that was not, that was going against conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom in basketball was that you put a, a bigger guy on the court, you have people, five guys of ascending or descending sizes on the court and that's the way you play basketball so they were playing the Cavaliers in the finals and the Cavaliers were missing two of their guys and the Warriors were playing this style that was semi what they do now this is 2015 and Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are making these threes and the Cavaliers are like all right we can't beat these guys at this game so we're gonna do 
something different than what the Cavs did. So the Cavs put a really big dude, this Russian dude named Timofey Mozgov. He's seven feet tall. They put him in a center, and they just kept giving him the ball. Like, the Warriors don't have anybody who can guard this guy. Let's just throw the ball to him, and LeBron's going to go on the post, and we're just going to beat these guys up and just beat them up with our size. And the Warriors tried to play that game for three games in that series. And those of y'all who watch basketball, if y'all may not even remember this, but the Cavaliers were up two games to one in the 2015 finals against the Warriors Without Kevin Love and without Kyrie Irving, they were up two games and one on the Warriors. And people were like, yo, are the Cavs really about to beat the Warriors with this team? They had a bunch of guys who wasn't even supposed to be in a rotation. They were beating the Warriors. And then the Warriors finally, coaching staff, they say, you know what? Forget this. Let's stop trying to play their game because we're not going to win. And let's play our game. Why don't Instead of us trying to go big for big with them, they put a big guy in the game. We put a big guy in the game, which is usually what happens in basketball. They said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to put five guys on the court who can all dribble, who can all shoot three-pointers, who can all play on the perimeter, and we're going to make them have to play our style. So it's going to be our style of small ball, as they called it back then, I guess they still call it, against their traditional style of basketball. And let's just see who wins. If we lose, we lose. But let's lose playing our game instead of lose playing their game. So the Warriors put five guys around the perimeter who can all shoot threes and if you know who the Golden State Warriors are, you know what's been happening in basketball the last few years. Not this season, but the last few seasons, the rest is history. The Warriors came back, won that series. The next year, almost won again. Cavs beat them. Then they won the next two when they got Kevin Durant on the team. Why? Because they stopped trying to do what everybody else was doing. They stopped trying to be better than everybody else. And they said, let's just be different. Now, did they have the personnel to be different? Did they have the talent to be different? Did they have some things break in their favor in order for them to extend this difference? Yes, yes, and yes. But the point still stands. And the other thing is you have the materials to be different as well. The challenge that you may be facing right now is that the only thing you can see is what you see everybody else doing and what you've been doing up to this point. So you might think all you can do is the same as you've always done. But you know what the saying is. If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. So challenge yourself to figure out how can you be different. And the first place to start is to look to the opposites. Look at what you've been trying and say, what if I just did the opposite of what I've been doing? Look at what your competition is doing who might be beating you out and ask yourself, what if I did the opposite of what my competition is doing? Look at the last thing you tried that failed and say, what if I did the exact opposite of that? What would that look like? What if I just tried it? I mean, if the, if the last thing failed, if this one fails, who, who cares? It'd just be two failures. doesn't matter. Nobody's going to remember it anyway. Why don't you just try it? So if you want to figure out how you can be different from your competition, the first question you ask yourself is, what if I did the exact opposite? There may be an opportunity there. That will at least get you thinking. That'll at least get you, uh, get you, get a brainstorm going for you. Point number two, the topic here for those who came in the middle of this is the opportunity is always in the opposites. In competition, especially in sports, but any type of competition, the number one thing you want to do to beat an opponent is make them do what they don't want to do. And the best way to find out what your opponent doesn't want to do is look at what they do a lot, what they favor doing, and they usually don't want to do the opposite of that. So for example, in basketball, there's a player who always like to dribble to their right you're going to find out if they can dribble to their left. Now, maybe they can. Now, maybe they'll surprise you and they can go to their left just as well as their right, but oftentimes they can't. So whatever that player likes to do a lot, you try to make them do the opposite of that, and you'll find that there may be a weakness there. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. So like the Golden State Warriors, they were playing the Cavs. The Cavs put all these big guys on the court, and the Cavs were just beating them up with all these big guys near the basket. The Warriors said, all right, let's see if they can play around the three-point line, and let's see if we can beat them making threes against their twos and it turned out the Cavs couldn't do anything about that. The Cavs couldn't stop that. And the Warriors went on to win three of the next four NBA championships. Might have won all five if it hadn't been for suspension and injuries. They might have won five championships in a row. Who knows? But the point is they became dominant simply because they had to ask themselves, why don't we do the opposite? How can we do the opposite of what everybody else is doing? Somebody left a comment said, make Ben Simmons drive. So if there's a player, for example, that's a good example. If there's a player who likes to drive to the basket all the time. See if that player wants to shoot a jump shot or is a player who always shoots jump shots. See if they can dribble to the basket. Maybe they can. Maybe they can't. Sometimes they'll surprise you and they could do it. They could do that, too. But sometimes they can't. So whatever the thing is that you think is somebody's strength, maybe look to the opposite of that. And there may be a weakness there. And as we move on to point number three. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about point number two. And point number three, if you want to learn people. And whether you're competing against them, you're just paying attention to people, you just uh, just want to develop more people skills. Usually, if you want to find someone's weakness, somebody's weak point, it's usually in the opposite of whatever they show as a strength. This is just a, a human nature point. Any of you who studies uh, human philosophy or just interpersonal relationships, usually the thing is people 
every human being has weaknesses and insecurities and faults or whatever you want to call it. People usually mask their weaknesses with their strengths. So, for example, if you know a person who's really aggressive and really abrasive and they got a really just a very forward attitude, a very, a very aggressive attitude, I guess we can call it. Usually they're covering up the fact that they may actually be very weak at their core and very insecure. So they cover it up with the exact opposite of that by having this brash, tough, aggressive exterior, which what it does is it pushes, people's, pushes people away, keeps people from ever going near them or trying them because they know deep down inside if they really get pushed, they're not really going to be able to push back. So you can usually find the opposite of what somebody is showing I mean, you can find if you look at what somebody is showing and the opposite of that is usually what is the actual truth. So if you haven't known someone who has this really bubbly personality, they seem to be so friendly, so overly friendly. So they make a big show of being friendly and being a life at a party and they're just nice to everybody, always smiling, always in the middle of everything. Usually that person could be all, they could be very dissatisfied, very sad. They could have a very dark uh, inside emotional emotional center, whatever is going on within them in their lives, but they mask it by pretending to be the life of the party, the nicest person in the room, friendly with everybody. I'm sure anyone who's listening to me right now has come across a person like that before. They, they just seem so bubbly and so out there. And I've known people like this. And when I'm watching them, I'm thinking to myself, all right, they are not like this. This is not the real them. I know they're putting on a show because they know they're being watched. But I think the opposite, there's some truth in the opposite of whatever this person is showing. Or you meet somebody who's really aggressive and they had this really tough exterior. Like they don't let anybody get anywhere close to them emotionally or physically. It's because usually they're hiding some form of cowardice or emotional weakness, if not physical weakness. So human beings, all of us, all of us wear masks. Every single day we wear a mask. And I'm not talking about the mask that you wear for the coronavirus. I'm talking about a mask as in the way that we want to show ourselves to the world, the type of person that we want people to think that we are, the type of person that if we wear that mask for long enough, we start to think that we're that person because we, wear, we have worn the mask so much, we condition ourselves to that way of being and we start to think that's the real us when it's really not. And the thing is, as I said already, whatever somebody is showing, especially if someone shows a very, very strong inclination towards a certain trait, they are often, not always, but often covering up the exact opposite of that trait. So if someone looks, they appear to be very friendly, they could be the most nastiest person at their core. Someone pretends to be very shy and they don't really talk a lot and they don't say anything. They're like in the corner or holding up the wall, as they say. That person really wants to be the extrovert and be out there and show themselves to the world. But they just, for whatever reason, they don't feel like they don't feel comfortable doing it. But that's what they actually want to do. And this is the way that it works in life. So anytime that you see, again, a strong personality trait from a human being, they're usually showing the exact opposite. But again, you got to watch people for a while. Don't go off of just one thing. So if somebody's telling jokes. That doesn't mean that they're a nasty person. Like they, You got to see how they are on a consistent basis. But you got to be paying attention. And this requires you to quiet the internal conversation going on in your mind and actually pay attention to other people, which is a skill that, frankly, most human beings don't have because most human beings are too self-centered to pay attention to anyone else other than themselves. But I'm not, I'm not saying you, but I'm saying most people. <laughs> all right. Now, all that being said, let me recap this, this uh, what I just talked about here. And if anybody has any questions on the subject, you can go ahead and post it in the comments and I will address the questions. The topic for those who came in the middle of this is the opportunity in life is always, always in the opposites. You want to find opportunity in anything. Look to the opposite of what's already going on or the opposite of what everybody else is doing or the opposite of what you've already been trying that isn't working. If you do the opposite of that, there may be an opportunity there. There's a book by this guy named Paul Arden. Really good book. It's called Whatever You Think, Think the Opposite. If you never heard of that book, go look it up. It's on Amazon. Unfortunately, Paul Arden passed away. I can't remember when he passed away several years ago, but the book is only in print, only in physical. There is no digital version because it has a lot of photos in it. It's like the square size book, like six by six square size book and it has a lot of illustrations in it. You can read the book in one sitting. You read the book in 30 minutes. It's a page turner, but it's only in print. You can't get it in digital and there's no audio version because, again, the author passed away many years ago. But go on. Amazon and get that book. It's called Whatever You Think, Think the Opposite. And there's another one that Paul wrote called It's Not How Good You Are, It's How Good You Want to Be. You might as well just get them both. So recapping these points. If you want to stand out, just be or do what everybody else is not. The opportunity is always in the differences and doing instead of trying to be better than everybody else, be different from everybody else because it may be impossible for you to be better 
and it may be impossible to convince anybody else that you're better, even if you think you're better. But if you're different, nobody can tell you that you're not different from somebody else. If you can make a stark contrast between you and whomever else is out there. Number two, in competition in life, always aim to make your opponent do the opposite of what they like to do. So whatever strength your opponent shows that they have, what you want to do is move them away from that strength and move the fight onto terrain that they're uncomfortable with, which is usually the opposite of the thing they're most comfortable with. Human beings are creatures of habit. We usually do the things that we're comfortable doing. So a person who likes to always argue and get into verbal combat, put them in a position where they can't argue and get in verbal combat, they're probably going to be very uncomfortable. A person who likes to be around all, always around other people, be the life of the party, isolate them, and they're going to be very uncomfortable. A person who likes to be isolated by themselves, put them around a whole bunch of other people. I mean, I'm, all right, we still here? Instagram trying to tell me that I had a poor connection. Can everybody still hear me on Instagram? I'm going to continue this recap either way. But anyway, and the third thing is, you got to learn people. Human beings, we all wear masks. Every single day we wear a mask. Every day we present ourselves a certain way to the world and we learn to wear these masks because as we, the older we get, the more we learn to cover ourselves up. The more we learn to mask our insecurities, mask our fears, mask our vulnerabilities from the world because we learn at a young age that if we show too much of those vulnerabilities, it can be used against us. So as humans, the older we get, we start, we harden. Those masks harden on us to the point that we forget that we're wearing a mask. But every human being, if you just look at any strong personality trait that a human being displays on a consistent period, over a consistent period, what is true about them at their core that they don't show is usually the opposite of what they're showing out front. So if anybody got any questions, go ahead and post your questions and I'll take them right now. Deb Jen, what's going on? Good to see you too. This person called me nephew. I don't know who this is. <laughs> who is that? Whoever said, whoever, Deb Jen, who are you? Somebody calling me nephew now. I know who all my aunts and uncles are, so you got to identify yourself. I can't tell by that name who that is. But anyway, I'm scrolling through my comments here to see what's going on. Mirror motivation, that's my pinned comment. Self-guide to self-discipline. You get this book for free by going to mirrorofmotivation.com if you haven't already. Any of y'all want to play ball overseas, that is balloverseas.com, the overseas basketball blueprint. I'll talk about that more in a moment, but I'm going to get to these comments first. Uh, Andy Young, what's going on? Yes, I am staying safe. I haven't been tested for the coronavirus, but I don't think I have it, but you never know. Some people are asymptomatic. Ramon Gard Gardawan says, since the gym's closed, I do body weight exercise instead. Am I getting the same gains? Well, I can't answer that question. Only you can answer that because I can't see your I can't see your body. Oh, Deborah Jenkins, I'm Debbie, what's going on? How you doing? I haven't heard from you in a long time. All right. So I can't answer that question, uh, Ramon, if you're getting gains. The gains is how your body is changing. So there's no possible way I can answer that question. Only you can answer that because well, we all locked in the house. So unless you're inviting a personal attorney to your house to evaluate you, only you can answer that. Andy says, how do you remain calm and confident during difficult situations? I did a stream on that like two or three days ago. So I suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'll post that replay and then you can watch that. But I talked about that two or three days ago, how to remain calm when everybody else is you know, going all in the opposite direction. Made Differently says, can I check DM? Yes, I will check the DM, but not now, not right now. Uh, let's see, we got any other questions or comments? Made Differently, you keep posting the same thing, and now you're starting to look like a beggar standing on the corner with a plastic cup. Now that's gonna make me not wanna check my DM. And whatever you're asking me, I'm probably not gonna respond. I'm gonna keep it real with you. All right, so, Anybody else got a question or comment, go ahead and post it, and I will take them. I'll address them right now. DGG360, what's up? Deep Wave, Deep Wave X, what's going on? Ayo hey, Vlad, what's going on? Right, let's see who else we got in here. The Life of Trice said that blueprint is good money. Yes, it is. So shout out to everybody who got that. He's talking about the overseas basketball blueprint. So any of y'all out there who want to play basketball overseas, that's this book right here. Go to balloverseas.com. This book is free. You do not have to pay for the book. I've already paid for the book. You can go on Amazon right now. You can buy this book for $29.95 or you can go to balloverseas.com and get it free. All you do is pay a small shipping charge. I'll ship this book to you anywhere worldwide. This is the only guidebook in the world that exists. It tells you what you need to do to play professional basketball overseas. It is the only one I wrote that guidebook. And if you don't play ball overseas, then you need to get this one right here. It's called The Mirror Motivation, The Self-Guide, The Self-Discipline to light that fire within you so you can do what you need to do and make the most of this time that we got right now. 
make the most of this time that we have on our hands right now. So question over on Facebook, Deb Jen says, how does one stay in the here and now in the midst of competition? Well, one thing you can do is listen to the master class that I did on that subject. That's all on the game group at workonyourgameu.com. However, and I'll type that in here in the comments on uh, Facebook for everybody who's anybody watching the replay on Facebook. But basically what you need to do is condition yourself for that. You can mentally condition yourself to deal with the, the stress or the anxiety or the pressure, whatever energy you're feeling on in the midst of a competition or in the midst of a challenging situation. That's something you can mentally train yourself for. So the same way that an athlete trains physically by going to the gym and shooting jump shots and catching footballs, you can train yourself mentally, but there's a strategy to train yourself mentally. There's a, a way, a path to follow in doing it. I've laid that out in one of my master classes. So I'll look it up and I'll post the link there or you can send me a DM and I'll tell you exactly where to find it. And I don't know why. Did that link post? Sorry, it did post. All right, let's see what else we got. Kiro says, can you be someone who is more talented than you in your field by being different? Well, it depends on what you consider beating them, but absolutely you can. Anybody can be beaten. Any, anybody that breathes or bleeds can be defeated. So anything that is alive is eventually going to die. All right? There's no animal out there that lives forever. So anything that dies can be beaten because it, all, it has a weakness. Vinyasa Nep says, how often do you do yoga? Every day. Probably as much as you since your name is Vinyasa. Ayo hey, Vlad said, what advice do you recommend to college students who are still figuring out their niche? Uh, stay in school. Go to class. Meet people. Get experiences, sign up for an internship, do some extracurricular activities, meet as many people as possible and have positive relationships with them. Because when you're on a college campus, you have no idea who all those people that you're walking around every day. You have no idea who's going to become what, and who's going to know who. So the more people you know, the better. There's no downside to having more positive relationships. All right. It's not like eating candy. You know, eating candy is cool. The first couple of bites, if you eat too much of it, it can start hurting you. Relationships is not like that. You eat, have a couple good relationships. That's great. Get a few more. That's even better. Get even more. That's even better. The more positive relationships you have, the better, because, again, you never know who somebody's going to become or who they're going to know later on down the line or what they can do for you later on down the line. So the more people you know, you put yourself in a better position. So what number one thing I tell you to focus on is sharpening up your people skills. And actually, I'll tell you, I'm going to go into my, I'm going to open up my, because I keep a master list right here on my phone here. I got the master list of, this is every master class I've ever put out on my podcast that is called Work On Your Game. As you see, these are no, there are no duplicates in here. I'm scrolling all the way down to the bottom. Today, we put out, I believe it was number 14, 13 today. So that's, yes, 1,400 plus master classes here. So someone, the question was, what should someone, what should you focus on? You're still trying to figure out your niche in college. Let me see if I can find that master class here because I know I did one. What, you should, what major you should choose in college? Number 277. What college major you should choose? See that green right there? That's number 277 master class in the uh, game group membership. Go to workonyourgameu.com. It's Working Your Game University. Safel Dean says, how do you get your vertical up? Get the vertical jump program. Hoophandbook.com slash vertical. Basketball, anything basketball skill related, go to hoophandbook.com. Hoophandbook.com. Trainer TG, it says, episode number 715 about reality on Spotify. No, it's only in the game group membership or working your game university.com. Listen, the bottom line is, people, what I put out on a podcast every day was too good to keep giving it to you free. I gave it out free for, what, three years? 2016, 17, 18, 19, four years, I put that thing out for free. So anything y'all missed, Go to work on your game, you. You get two weeks free. I give you two weeks free today. You can get two weeks starting right now for free. You can listen to whatever you want. You can sample anything in there for two whole weeks free. If you want to keep the membership, then you can pay. If you don't, it's all good. You can cancel. But that's what it is. All right, that's 715. Anything that's older than 250 episodes is not on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or none of that. Everything is in the game group membership. I may eventually put those out individually for sale one by one, but when I get the right uh, mechanisms in place to do that, then I'll put them all out en, en masse, one by one. Brown County 3 was good. Herm, Herm, said, Herm said, I don't got a physical debit card or ATMs anyway uh, making a payment. Yeah, just go to like a CVS or a Walgreens or any, uh, any grocery store or convenience store. And buy one of those debit cards. They sell the debit cards right there at checkout. 
So you buy the card and then you just put cash on it. You give the cashier the cash, they swipe the card, they put the money on that card. So then you just take that card and you use it the same way you would use a credit card or a debit card. You get that at any CVS, Eckerd, Dwayne Reed, Target, any store. And those stores are still open. Herm, Herm V Fleet. So hopefully that answers your question. B. Martin says, I missed the live stream. Can you give a quick overview like what the topic was? The topic was the opportunity is always in opposites. Oh, yeah. Anybody who wants to get a full master class on what I just talked about today, that is master class number 1025. I'm just looking through my master list right here. Number 1025, the opportunity is in the opposites. I'm going to highlight it right here so y'all know that I'm not just, y'all don't think I'm just making this up. See that highlight? Number 1025, the opportunity is in the opposites. That's what I just talked about. That's number 1025. You can get that again at workonyourgameuniversity.com. What else we got going on? Kumsan Thomas. What's good? Well, I've been around. You said a long time no see. I've been here. I have been here. Everybody know where to find me. I'm the easiest person to find on the internet. Made differently says, I thought you were ignoring your comments. It's from before my fault. The Life of Trice says, audio book version on repeat. That's what's up. Yes, every book that I ever put out is available in audio book as well. So any of y'all who prefers audio books, you don't sit down to read the book, but you want the audio version. Everything I've ever made is available on Audible. Who else sells audio books? Everybody else, iBooks, Audible, those are usually the places to sell most of the books. Uh, Seifel Dean says, how do you get your vertical up? I answered that. Whoopanbook.com. Hern Vliet says, I've been following you on YouTube since 2010. Big fan of you and your mindset. I appreciate that. Vlad says, buy a game is still one of my favorites. I remember reading it on a bus to and from school while the other kids were hollering in the background. Yeah, shout out to everybody who read buy a game back in 2000. And yeah, I put that thing out a long time ago, 2010. I put buy a game out before I was even collecting email addresses. <laughs> so I know I missed out on a good 30,000 email addresses when I put that book out. But it's all good. K Ball says, I'm at the court. Someone said ball. And I said no because of the virus. Am I wrong? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Trainer TG, that is correct. Work on your game, you is in university. Work on your game, you dot com. Kumsan said, did I win a chip overseas? No, I did not win a chip overseas, but I did win a chip playing in some tournaments and events in the United States. Safel Dean says, you come to Cali anytime soon. Well, right now, we can, right now, ain't nobody going nowhere, but we will see. This summer, I will absolutely, as long as this, this whole thing clears up, let's say in the next month or two, I will absolutely be in Philadelphia this summer. That's a guarantee. At least one time, probably twice. But I will be in Philly definitely this summer. LA, not in the plans yet for the summer because I didn't go to Philly last summer. I'm definitely coming to Philly this year. That's, that is the only thing that's etched in stone. And there's one other place etched in stone, but I can't tell y'all where that is. It's not, in, it's not in the United States. But stay tuned. Mr. Ray says, thanks for all your help. You're welcome. Iman says, I remember a story you said when the worst player on the team played his best game because the coach told him to play like the best. How is that true? Yo, didn't you ask me this question yesterday? I wrote about this in my book, The Super You. Iman, Iman Roy. Read my book, The Super You, or go to bulletproofbundle.com and get the Bulletproof Bundle. The Super You is one of the four books in that bundle. Or go to mirrormotivation.com and there's a little checkbox. When you put in your info, there's a little checkbox that says get the whole Bulletproof Bundle. And you'll get it at the cheapest possible price by getting this book free. And I'll give you the other three. And that's that. You can get the Super U. You can read the book. And you'll know how it's possible. Because I laid that out. Or you can look up my TED Talks on confidence. I've done two of them. You can read my book, Work On Your Game. I did a whole chapter called Super U that's about confidence. I've covered that like multiple times, multiple angles. Uh, Kiro says, is it possible to stay locked in toward the goal all the time? And if so, how? Well, yes, it is possible. Of course, it's possible. And secondly, how? Get my book, The Mental Workbook. Yeah, work on mygame.com slash workbook. Mental workbook. That's work on mygame.com slash workbook. Do y'all notice a pattern here? <laughs> I've written a book for damn near any topic that you could add, ask me because that's the reason, that's one of the main reasons I started making content. So I could just not have to answer the same questions over and over. Put it in the book so it's there and anybody can get the information and they don't have to, I don't have to be there to give it to you. Made differences. I don't know if I'm doing too much or too less. I'm trying to make it to the NBA. Well, you decide. Too much and too less are matters of opinion. So it's not about my opinion. It's your opinion. What do you think is too much or too less? That's how you know if it's too much or too less. Nobody else can tell you what that is. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get our commercial one last time. The Mirror Motivation, Self-Guide, Self-Discipline. This book is free. You do not have to pay for it. I pay for the book. 
physical book. I'm shipping this to you worldwide. Go to mirrorofmotivation.com. Anybody who wants to play ball overseas, you want to play professional basketball, you want to know the steps you need to take, the information you need, what you need to do from a guy who walked on at a D3 school and hustled his way into a nine-year pro career playing through eight different countries, balloverseas.com, the overseas basketball blueprint. This book is free. This book is $29.95 on Amazon. You can go get it over there if you want to, or you can get it for free from me by going to balloverseas.com. Again, that's balloverseas.com. Everybody, have a great night. Don't shake anybody's hand. Wash your hands 20, for 20 seconds thorough. He was soaking water. Work on your game. Enjoy all day. We out.